I think there ought to be a government booklet entitled, Where to Stick It. <laughs> now that I think of it, I believe there is a government booklet like that. They sent it to you on April 15th. <laughs> Welcome to the Comedy Show. This is Jim. Thanks again for swinging by. Really excited today. We've got more George Carlin, Preaching Some Truth. Uh, but this time it's going to be my wife, Tabby. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe. Glad you guys came by. You really are looking great. Let's do this. Now this next thing, this next thing is about the English language. It's about little expressions we use. We, we all say and the little sayings and expressions that we use all the time, most of us. And we never really seem to examine these expressions very carefully at all. We just oh, yeah. sort of say these things as if they really made sense. Like, legally drunk. <laughs> well, if it's legal, what's the fucking problem? Men, <laughs> Hey, leave my friend alone, officer. He's <laughs> legally drunk. He's legally drunk. Oh. You know you can stick it. <laughs> well, why do we always assume everyone knows where they can stick it? Suppose you don't know. Suppose you're a new guy. You have absolutely no idea where to stick it. I think there ought to be a government booklet entitled, Where to Stick It. <laughs> now that I think of it, I believe there is a government booklet like that. They sent it to you on April 15th. <laughs> undisputed heavyweight champion. Well, if it's undisputed, what's all the fighting about? <laughs> It's the quiet ones you gotta watch. You know that one, eh? Every time you see a story about a serial killer on TV, what do they do? They bring on the neighbor. And the neighbor says, well, he was always very quiet. And someone in the room says, it's the quiet ones you gotta watch. Absolutely. This sounds to me like a very dangerous assumption. I will bet you anything that while you're watching a quiet one, a noisy one will fucking kill you. <laughs> Suppose you're in a bar and one guy's sitting over on the side reading a book, not bothering anybody. Another guy's standing up at the front with a machete, banging it on the bar, saying, I'll kill the next motherfucker <laughs> who comes in here. <laughs> who are you going to watch? <laughs> you're goddamn right. Lock him up and throw away the key. Throw him away. This is really stupid. Throw him. Where are you going to throw the key? Right out in front of the jail? His friends will find it. How far can you draw a key? 50, 60 feet the most. Even if you lay it flat on its side like that and you scale it, <laughs> what do you get? An extra 10 feet, tops. This is a stupid idea, needs to be completely rethought. Down the tubes. You hear that one a lot. People say, ah, the country is going down the tubes. Going down the tubes. What tubes? <laughs> Have you seen any tubes? Where are these tubes? And, and where do they go? <laughs> and how Bushy. come there's more than one tube? <laughs> it would seem to me one country, one tube. There what does every state all tubes, of a sudden have to have George. a tube now? <laughs> one tubes. tube is all you need. Many tubes. But a tube that big? Hmm? Somebody would have seen it by now. Mm. Somebody would have said, hey, Joey, Joey, look at the fucking tube. <laughs> Big ass fucking tube over here. You never hear that. You know why? No tubes. <laughs> we don't have tube one. We are essentially tubeless. <laughs> takes the cake. The you know, say, boy, he really takes the cake. Where? <laughs> Where do you take a cake? To the movies? To the party. You know where I would take a cake? Down to the bakery to see the other cakes. Aww. And how come he takes the cake? How come he don't take the pie? <laughs> pie is easier to carry than the cake. <laughs> easy as pie. Aww. Hey, wait. Cake is not too hard to carry either. Piece of cake. <laughs> the greatest thing since sliced bread. Nice. So this is it, huh, folks? No. Yes. A couple of hundred thousand years. George, you really are the master. The fucking pyramids, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> Panama Canal, the Great Wall of China. 
Even a lava lamp. <laughs> to me, is greater than sliced bread. What's so great about sliced bread? You got a knife, you got a loaf of bread, slice the fucking thing! <laughs> And get on with your life. <laughs> yes, move along. Just move along. Out walking the streets. You know, guy gets a parole. They say, now instead of being in prison, this guy is out walking the streets. How do we know? <laughs> Maybe the guy's home banging the babysitter. Uh... Not everybody gets a parole is out walking the fucking streets. A lot of times they, they steal a car, you know. And we ought to be glad. Thank God he stole a car. At least he's not out walking the streets. <laughs> Fine and dandy. That's an old-fashioned one, isn't it, yeah? Say to a guy, how are you? He says, Fine I'm and dandy. dandy. Not me. I never say that. You know how come? Because I'm never both of those things at the same time. <laughs> Sometimes I'm fine, not dandy. Yes, I understand. Close to dandy. <laughs> approaching dandy. In the vicinity of dandyhood. Not quite fully dandy. Mm. Other mm. times, I am indeed highly dandy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great comedic writer. However, not fine. One time, one time, 1965. August for about an hour. I was both fine and dandy at the same time. But nobody asked me how I was. <laughs> and I could have told him. I could have told him. I could have told him. I could have said to the person, fine and dandy. I consider it a lost opportunity. Walking papers. You know? Guy gets fired. He said, geez, poor guy. Well, they give him his walking papers today. <laughs> Did you ever get any walking papers? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Believe me, in my life, I got fired a lot of times. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> Never got any walking papers. Never got a pink slip either. You know what I would get? A guy would come around to my desk and say, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> <laughs> you don't need paper for that. It's like the riot act. The riot act. They keep telling you they're going to read that to you. <laughs> Have you heard this thing at all? Especially when you're a kid, they threaten you. You wait till your father comes home, he's going to read you the riot act. <laughs> Tell him I already read it myself. <laughs> And I didn't like it either. I consider it wordy and poorly thought out. <laughs> he wants to read me something. How about the gentleman's guide to the golden age of blowjobs? <laughs> More than happy. Oh, I bet yeah. you say that sometimes, don't you? Once in a while, you say More to somebody, Oh, I'd be nope. more than happy to do that. How oh, can you be more than happy? <laughs> to me, this sounds like a dangerous mental condition. <laughs> we had to put Dave in the mental home. He was... He was more than happy. Whoa. Yes. More than happy. Beautiful expression and beautiful... One more of these. He, in your own words. His presence on stage is People fantastic. say that to you. You know, when you hear that a lot in a classroom or in a courtroom, they'll say to you, tell us... In your own words. Yes, tell us in your own words. Like, how awesome do you? Do you have your own words? <laughs> hey, I'm using the ones everybody else has been using. <laughs> Next time they tell you to say something in your own words, say, Nick Flut Blarney Quando Flu. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's great. I love George Carlin. He's master of stage and story.